Good morning. I hope you're all doing well. I hope everything is uh, safe and healthy in your homes. We're going to jump right in today with the lesson number five in the book of Philippians, where Paul continues the second half of his letter by really getting into some, some good advice and some things that he really wants to teach people. Now, some of the things that he's going to start saying are things that you've heard before. And you're actually going to see Paul say, I don't mind if you've heard them before. I still like to say them. I'm going to say them again because it's good to hear things like this multiple times. So we're going to be in Philippians chapter 3. There are only four chapters in this letter. And so we're halfway through. We're going to have eight weeks in this. This is week number five. If you need to see weeks one, two, three, and four, you can go down to the description in the video. There's going to be a link to the playlist. You can back up and watch the old ones. It's a little bit of a time investment. You might want to just put this one on hold for a little while until you can catch up but it really is useful to see them all in order. It's one of the great things about having videos here on YouTube. They keep an archive. You can always go back and see. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and go grab a Bible, go to Philippians chapter 3. All right, so now that you have that and, and we're ready to go, we're just going to dive right in. I want you to think about some of the things in your life where you feel that you are blessed, where you feel like like lucky or or that you have something good something that you could even brag about if you know we could allow ourselves to do that maybe something that you do really well something that you're talented at or maybe it's a possession something you have that you that you value or maybe it's a relationship some you know there's a person that is so close to you you would just like to to brag about them for a little while think about those things and and with that in mind we're going to go into uh, chapter 3. Uh, Paul has just finished talking about two people that are very close to him, Timothy and Epaphroditus, and, and how valuable they are to him and, and how we could learn to be more like them. And so he can, continues on, and now he's given some advice. Verse 1, Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. So he's He's only about halfway through his, his letter, but he's, he's saying, let's keep going, right? I know you've heard some of this stuff before, but it's good. It's good. It's a safeguard. It helps keep you safe to hear these things again. He's right. This is not like he's saying, oh, you know, oh, one more thing. He's, he's saying, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, in verse two, now he gets a little bit, little bit, um, technical. In, in the next couple of verses. And I'm going to try to explain it as best I can without getting you know too academic on you. He says, watch out for these dogs, these evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. And he's, he, he gives this impression of, of terrible people who are, um, you know, who are, who are hurting people. Right? For it is we who are the circumcision, who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. And he's going to talk about flesh a lot in these next couple of verses. And it, it might get a little bit weird, but basically what he's saying is whenever he talks about people who put confidence in the flesh, he's saying that he was raised Jewish and he was raised according to all of the laws that Jewish people follow. And one of those main things uh, for babies, for males at least, is circumcision. And he says that there are people who are putting so much value in their heritage that they're missing the the message of Christ. Okay, so so let's keep going on with that. He's verse four. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. Okay, I got to back up a little bit. Right, people, we are the ones who serve God by His Spirit. We are the ones who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. Right, so we're not worried about our heritage or any kind of extra credit that we might have gotten from you know being born into the right family. And he says, but I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh. I have more. So whatever whatever reasons anybody might say, oh, I'm someone special because of my family, because I was born Jewish, because I was raised in a certain way, uh, you got to keep in mind there are now, there are Christians, people who are following Christ, who are, who are from 
the Jewish community, and there are also people who have heard about Jesus who are not Jewish. They're, they're Gentiles. And, and these people are now mixing together, and they're one church, and it causes some friction. So Paul, he's going to give him a little bit of a resume. Right? He says, here's the things that I have. Here's, here's my credit. I was circumcised on the eighth day, meaning like the eighth day after being born, which was according to the Jewish law, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. Right? I'm like the poster child for being Hebrew. In regard to the law, I was a Pharisee. As for zeal, I was persecuting the church. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. Right? So he's saying, I've got all this stuff. I was passionate in my persecution of the church, he says, but that was my, that was my faith at work. It was misguided, it was wrong, but I was zealous. I was passionate for God. Um, you know, as far as the law was concerned, I was a Pharisee. I was an expert on the law. As far as righteousness based on that law, I was faultless. I never broke the law. Now, he says righteousness based on the law because as we know that it's the law is not what makes a person righteous. The, the law is not what proves that you're a good person. The law is just there to remind you when you break it. So he keeps going. Right? Whatever gains, whatever, whatever things were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. All right, I'm going to stop there for a second before we move on to that next paragraph. When Paul starts talking about these people who put confidence in the flesh, he's, he's saying that it, it's not about where you used to be. It's not about the people you came from. It's about who you are. He says, we serve God in his spirit. And it's about your heart. It's not about your body. It's not about the things that you do or your family. Right? He was, you know, Paul had everything going for him, but he says, none of that matters. I count it all as loss. Here's his point. It doesn't matter how much time you spend each day reading the Bible. It doesn't matter how many hours of week you spend at church. It doesn't matter how many, how many, you know, big mission trips you go on or how much money you give. Or, you know, people who take pride in their religious accomplishments are just like these people in that day who they, they put confidence in the flesh, who, who they were, their heritage. People who put stock in, in these religious accomplishments and judge other people for not having them and say, like, I'm better than you because I've done all this stuff. Paul's going to have some really, really harsh things to say about this. It's absolutely not the kind of life that Jesus wants us to live. And it's not the sort of thing that Jesus would ever have done. All right, so listen to where Paul goes with this. And, and listen for that voice of Jesus in your consciousness. Um, uh, try to let God speak to you to, to give you that urge to change your value system. Okay? Paul, he says, whatever that were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Right? He says, whatever was, whatever was a gain, it's a loss. Whatever was profit, it's nothing. It's worthless. Now he says, everything is worthless compared to the value of knowing Jesus. Right? So I don't have, he says, I don't have any profit. I don't have anything going for me. No credit. In, instead, the most valuable thing, the thing I'm going to brag about is that I know Christ. And for Christ's sake, I have lost everything. I've given everything up. He says, I consider them, meaning his accomplishments and the things that he's done in his life, I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, that's one of the things he said earlier, but that, but that righteousness which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Right? Paul describes his former way of life as garbage. And if you're going to let me geek out about uh, Greek words for a second, I promise you it's worth it because it's kind of funny. Uh, the word that Paul writes, remember, he's not writing in English. English hadn't been invented yet. He's writing in Greek. And the word he uses, um, is, and I don't, I don't actually know how to pronounce it in Greek, uh, but the word he uses is not garbage. The word he uses is basically poop. It, it, like waste. It, it's, it's the muck in a sewer. 
Um, that's that that would be the word that he uses. We we've translated it as garbage or rubbish, um, something that's utterly worthless. But he he basically says it's all poop. And that's his attitude towards his former life, the life he had before Jesus. He was important. Uh, he was well thought of. People liked him. People respected him. He says that's all poop. It's garbage. It's, it's not worth anything compared to knowing Christ. All right, I'm going to keep going. Uh, he, re, he reminds us that it's not about the righteousness that comes from the law. It's not about following rules. It's about the righteousness of having faith, having faith in God. Right? That's the basis. So he's, he's reinforcing that our, our salvation, our value, is through Christ and has very little to do with us, with the things that we do. So then he keeps going, and, and, and this is going to get really familiar. All right, verse 10, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. I like that Paul uses that word somehow, almost as if he doesn't understand how it works. He doesn't understand how people can come back from the dead. All he knows is that it happened once. And if it happened once, and you, he says, I'm going to put my faith in that guy, anybody who can predict his own resurrection and then pull it off, I'm going to go ahead and follow that guy. He doesn't understand everything yet, even it's an expert like Paul, but he says, I know it's possible because he did it. Right? So, I want to know Christ. That's his top priority. Everything else is garbage. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want to know how it works. All right? I want to see it happen again. The, and he says, and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. Now, that's not the, that's not the good, warm, fuzzy feelings part. All right? That's like, I'm going to go through everything that Jesus went through. I'm going to go through crucifixion. Well, not physically, but he says, I'm willing to give up everything. I'm willing to give up my reputation. I'm willing to give up my comfort. I'm willing to give up everything I have in favor of the power of Christ and his resurrection. And somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. Right? Uh, it keeps going for a little while. Verse 12, not that I have already obtained all of this. Right? He says, I don't even have it yet. I'm not there. I'm still working. I've not arrived, I've not already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. That's a verse that might sound familiar, but I think if you look at it with new eyes, you'll see something that you, you might not have noticed before. We, we've talked before about pressing on towards the goal, but look at how he describes that goal, this, this goal of, of being like Christ. He says, I, I press on, I want to take hold of that for which, meaning that I want to take hold of this thing, that the reason why Jesus took hold of me was for that thing. I probably just explained that in an even more confusing way. So let me, let me try. Remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about that middle voice, that work out your faith, work out your salvation, that while you are working at getting better at following Jesus, that your faith is also making a change in you. It, it's, it's, it works together. This is that same idea. He says, I'm pressing on to grab hold of something, and, and Jesus has already grabbed hold of me, and the reason he grabbed hold of me was so that I could grab hold of him. And I'm just trying to follow Christ. Right? Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. Again, he says, I'm not there yet. I haven't accomplished. Don't look at Paul and think there's a guy who's got it all figured out because he's saying he doesn't. It's a process. It's a journey that he thinks he probably is never going to be 100% finished, 100% like Jesus. And he's not, at least not on this earth. But one thing I do, right? I'm not there yet, but here's what I'm doing. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. That's the best advice Paul can give. That's the best thing he can tell us to do. Forget what's behind. Press on towards what's ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 
I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So he's using a running metaphor. Right? And he's saying, I, I'm pressing on, I, I'm running a race. And at the end of that race is a prize, and I want to win it. Right? And the prize is the, it's the kind of prize where you, you get a medal for, like a marathon. You get the medal just for finishing. Right? Don't give up. It's, it's not a competition between more than one person. It's just about you and how do you run your race. Are you going to finish? Are you going to keep going or are you going to give up? Last two verses this evening. Uh, all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. Right? If you are mature, if you are a follower of Christ and, and you've been a Christian for a while and you consider yourself mature in your faith, then this is the view that you should have. This is a test of your maturity. All right? Are you pressing on to win the prize? Are you forgetting the things that are behind you and only looking forward? Are you considering everything that you might have to be garbage compared to knowing Christ? This is, this is the view of the mature faith. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. I love that phrase. I, I love that Paul writes that. He, he's writing this advice to, to people, and he knows some of them are going to read it and think, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's entirely right. And Paul just says, eh, if you disagree, you know, God will teach you. Right? God will make it clear to you eventually. You don't have to just take my word for it. You'll eventually live through it. But I'd like you to know it now. Last verse, verse 16, only let us live up to what we have already attained. All right? What have we already attained? Well, we've already attained salvation. We already have faith in Christ. And that, the, that one day in your past when you decided to put Christ first, when you decided to put your faith in Christ, all right, that's something that you already have. So at the very least, hold on to that. Even if you make no progress today, even if you make no progress this week or this month, Hold on to what you have. Don't go backwards. Right? This is Paul telling us, don't look back. Keep looking forward. Right? We're going to keep we're going to keep going in in this chapter next week. Uh, I want you to go down to the description at the end of this video, and there's another link, and there's going to be a note there that says, "Don't do this before the video. Do it after." So I want you to go through and answer the questions and think about what are the things that you feel blessed in your life and are they important are they important or are they garbage what's more important to you and how can you use the things that you have been blessed with to further the cause of Christ to advance the gospel and bring more people to knowing Christ because that's that's what Paul says is the most important thing can I know Christ right. I hope you have a wonderful week it was great to see some of you today uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend where we get to kind of relax and, and maybe have some time to, to worship together. If you're watching the YouTube videos of the main worship service, uh, I'm really glad to be able to hear from you and stay in contact. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.